Well, good morning. Please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please read along with me. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be reading today. You Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, check me out. Read along with me because this, my mouth will go quicker than my brain sometimes. <laughs> so, read along with me, okay? We're going to begin with a portion of scripture in Hebrews chapter 5. The book of Hebrews is specifically written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we're going to actually uh, make reference to the book of Hebrews a few times today. The purpose of this video today is again we are going to be touching on the seven dispensations. Now, this is not really going to be all that meaty. Okay? The meat video on rightly dividing is a two-part video which will be in the description box for you. Okay? That's where we get extremely deep into it. Today we're just going to be kind of lightly gleaning over these things. Okay? But like I've said, this rightly dividing is imperative it is foundational and it is something that is lacking not being taught and even being taught against by christianity okay so <clears throat> we got actually quite a bit of scripture we're going to be going through today it just it, that's how it works out and also too you're watching this you watch this you have questions Leave them in the comment section. I am not the only one who is uh, who knows about this. Several of the brethren also know can also answer your questions. So if you have questions, there are two email addresses that you got, and you can leave a comment. Okay. If I don't answer them, uh, one of the brethren can. Okay. So <clears throat> Hebrews five verses eleven on verse fourteen. Let's begin. Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Unless it tickles their ears and gratifies their flesh, most of Christianity don't want to hear it. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, now we've uh, talked about this already before in videos this week, you got some of these Christians who say, well, I've been saved for 25 years. And, okay, you believe in a three-person God, okay, you don't rightly divide the word of truth, okay, and you don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. And you've been saved for 25 years. Mm. Good for you. Y yeah, I think perhaps maybe. No. But, okay, you've been saved that long, and you don't know the nuts and bolts of rightly dividing and when a saint tries to help <laughs> tell you uh, dude you gotta rightly divide the word of truth you treat the saint as if he farted in your general direction okay now doctrinally specific the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble um, looking to reestablish the ways of the law. We're going to talk about that. Okay. They have all these things that they're trying to bring, you know, from like in the Torah and whatnot, which will be applicable during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, it will. But they need to be shown again the basics. Okay. So, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. These Christians are in need of milk. Foundational principles, foundational teachings of Scripture. And like we discussed in Wednesday's video, dear Christian, okay, if your foundation is the Trinity, you are built off of the entirely wrong foundation, okay? That thing you need to really, you really need to wrestle with that thing, okay? You really do. Check out uh, Wednesday's video, okay? But this thing about rightly dividing, this thing about rightly dividing, what is it basically? Okay, and like I said, this is not brain surgery. This is not rocket science. But Christianity, Christians are not being taught this. And when you don't <laughs> rightly divide the word of truth and you jumble everything together and try to make everything of scriptural scripture doctrinally pertinent for us today, you've got all kinds of problems and the Lord is ashamed of you. Okay? All right? So, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation, there's the word dispensation, of the grace of God which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. Mystery Babylon, the great the mother of harlots, likes to add all these other crazy nonsensical mysteries. What are the, there are, there are actually a few scriptural mysteries, but what is Paul talking about? Let's read. Whereby when ye read, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5, which in, <laughs> which in other ages, or dispensations, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself. Very significant verse because you, some of you Christians, you have heard what? That they were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden. That Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they knew about the cross and were looking forward to it. That, that, that sodomite Steve Anderson guy, he, he's a big proponent of that. They were looking forward to the cross and some of these stupid sleazy believists also you know, with their nonsense, uh, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden, we're going to debunk that really easily today. But um, uh, some of them are like, oh yeah, they were looking forward to the cross um, <laughs> all the way back in Genesis. No, they weren't. If that were the case, then guess what? You have a contradiction with that verse 5 right there. Okay? Now, there were types prefigured, such as the Exodus with the, the, the Passover, with the, you know, the blood on the doorpost and on the, the thing on the top there. Yes, a lot of the sacrificial animal sacrifices are uh, prefigured. Yes, but, Christian, listen to me, listen to me, okay? Verse 5 here, we're going to look at another occurrence uh, where this is uh, like strengthened, okay, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, okay? But, Christian, listen to me, okay? Adam, all right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron, okay? The kings were not looking forward to the cross. Okay? There was prophecy of God will uh, provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Yes, yes, but they did not know about the cross and other dispensations until the one that we are in currently. 
that uh, you hear it from the sleazy believers. Uh, you hear it from some of the Baptists, like that's that sodomite Stephen Anderson. Okay, Th that's not true. If it were, which it isn't, then you have a contradiction here. In verse five, okay. So put that that they didn't they they didn't okay. Verse 5 again, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capitalist spirit. What is this mystery? Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. <clears throat> Verse 7, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. The mystery that us Gentiles are grafted in to the tree of the Jew. Okay? All right? Uh, you know, that's why Peter needed the vision of the sheet so that he would not call what God has cleansed us Gentiles common. Okay? All right? Uh, unfathomable to the Jews. That's why the sign gifts, okay? Unfathomable. It's like, wow, Gentiles are now have the same standing today as Jews. We are not Jews. We are grafted into the tree of the Jew, okay? And you, you can look that up with the, on the Jewish pay, playlist about replacement theology and all that stuff, okay? But, all right, in other ages it wasn't revealed what was revealed today by what? By his holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit. Okay? This is significant because it's showing you difference in other ages and or dispensations. Okay? And also, salvation differs between dispensations. Dispensation or an age is a specific time allotted by the Lord in which there are specific doctrines in which man is either made right with the Lord and or saved. Okay? And that is what makes the dispensations different. If there was no grace at all, everybody would poof, go up like a puff. Okay? Grace is there in every dispensation. Yes, and it's funny because these sleazy believers, fake gracers, talk about all oh, grace. Oh, they have nothing to do with actual grace. They know nothing of grace. Okay? Smack a jack, uh, dear sunken eyed from Canada, praise he ain't. And his two stupid broads that he has. There, I said his name. Okay? They know nothing about grace. Nothing. All right? Okay? They know nothing about it. All right? Grace is in every dispensation. Okay? What changes in the dispensation, dear friend, is salvation. How a man is made right with God. Okay? Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Okay? Verses 12 on to verse 29. The one guy that I mentioned, stay away from him. That guy is an idiot. It's funny, rabbit trail, that, that guy I mentioned, I, I, mean, I said his name once, and that's all I'm going to say. His name is Tom, and he's got these two stupid broads, these two stupid caco demons with him. That guy is an absolute idiot. But you know what's funny? <laughs> the guy showing the brain power. But hey, he made my worst enemy <laughs> one of his moderators. And I saw that because, unfortunately, I've watched that idiot quite a few times, uh, unfortunately. And it's funny because my worst enemy, and you know, that, that devil, he's just having a good old time. Causing all kind, kinds of problems, insulting people, and, and he's a moderator. It's like, it was almost, it was kind of humorous. It's like, wow, Tom, you're, you're stupid. You made this devil one of your moderators, and you're okay with him insulting everybody? Which is what he does. You know, that's, you know, everybody who's ever known this guy, sooner or later, he finds a problem with them. And he's just cantankerous, whatever. But I, I found that, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I did. 
I did, <laughs> but sorry about that little rabbit trail. Yeah, stay, stay away from that idiot. That idiot Tom and his two cackle demon little girls that he has with them. The guy is clueless. He is he is a horrible sleazy believers. Okay, he makes Mister Sunken Eyed, the dear Canadian guy, he he makes him look like uh, the shining light. Okay, he really does. But Colossians chapter one, verses twelve to the close. Okay, come on. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, and we're going to look at that again today in Genesis chapter 1, okay? That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in, his, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. He has the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay? And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, people who are saved, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. You can only be reconciled if he saves you. And you can only be saved if you go to him his way. Okay? Not by the myriad of broad paths that so many people offer you. Okay? <clears throat> In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If, we did not like, like I told you before, you see, there's a scriptural lift, you take your little pen, see? circle that. Okay? Again, let me do this again. You get your little sharpie. Like that. Okay? Okay, very important. Okay? Very important. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Okay? Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. <coughs> we people are the church the buildings no okay they call them churches they are not sanctified in the new testament god does not dwell in temples made with hands you wicked catholics okay <clears throat> Where, uh, whereof i am made a minister verse 25 according to the dispensation of god there it is again which is given to me for you to fulfill the lowercase w written word of God. Even the mystery which hath, pay attention, verse 26, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his Christians. To his saints. Okay? Oh, and incidentally, Paul never, never, check, check me out, he never used that word. Peter used it as an example that it's better to be uh, labeled that by the lost world rather and die like that rather than to be equated as a murderer. You've got to include that context if you're clinging to what Peter said. 
to justify it, okay? But whatever, okay? Verse 26 is another verse. Look at the scripture, not me. That shows you that the guys from the, uh, the Garden of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, okay, the patriarchs, Moses, the kings, they didn't know about what was coming. Okay? You've been given two uh, portions of scripture that show you that they were not looking forward to the cross. Okay? They weren't. They didn't know what to look for. They knew that something was coming, but what specifically? They did not know. Okay? Christian, don't believe that lie. Okay? And many of you do. So let's continue. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I thought I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, if you're saved, you are. And guess what? The Lord is that spirit. Okay? We, we talked about this in the Trinity thing. Okay? You have God the Father living within you. If you are truly His, if you are truly saved, you came to Him on His terms. Okay? Christ in you. I thought the Holy Ghost lived in me. Ah, uh, He does. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? All right? This... Like I said, this is this is simple nuts and bolts stuff that you Christians have been lied about to and not even taught. You're, you're crippled. And like I said, if your foundation is a three-person God, you don't have the right God. Okay? So, whom we preach, we, who? Saints. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me. Okay? Alright? And of course, let's let's hit the actual verse where it says. Rightly dividing, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Study! Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Mark the messenger. And the one video that the Lord had me to do refuting that fine young man, um, he did... Study to show thyself a broke on a God. He stopped. He stopped. He wouldn't read the whole verse. God forbid if he did. Because, you know, he's, he's uh, preaching that you got to keep the law and that uh, Hamites are the only real Jews, Hebraic Jews, which is an impossibility. The guy's a lost devil. And even Mark the Messenger, I have been, and I actually did see that video, brother, thank you. Even he was now going in the direction of <clears throat> Jesus Christ is coming afresh. Jesus is the Lord. He was even going in that direction himself. Mark the messenger was like, oh boy. <laughs> this is one guy, the devil that I know that you should talk to, Mr. Messenger. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> study. Shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babbling. For they will increase unto more ungodliness, or you could say worldliness. Okay? Right? It's a command. If you do not rightly divide the word of truth, God is going to be ashamed of you. It's right there. Okay? Paul was dispensational. Okay? Paul taught you to rightly divide the word of truth. The Lord through Paul taught you how to, you know, to rightly divide the word of truth. And see what happens is, as Christianity has done, has done, they take all of scripture and try to apply all of it doctrinally, salvifically for us today. That's a problem. That's a problem. 
That's a big problem. Now, I believe, preach and teach, seven dispensations. Uh, for this video, I'm using the Schofield thing, and I don't look at the notes. Okay, I don't. But um, Mr. Schofield, um, he believed in something like 12 or 15 dispensations. Uh, you know, I, I have been asked before, you know, uh, what study Bible do you recommend? I don't. But, but if I were held, someone to hold a gun at my head, it's like, recommend me a study Bible. Okay, J.D. Schofield. With all its problems. Okay, but like I said, I don't. But like I said, if someone presses me and irritates me, and it's good, will you just give me one at least? It's like, fine, get a Schofield. Okay? But never mind. Seven dispensations. Now, in the two videos that will be in the description box, we get really meaty into it. We're going to have a gleaning here. Do the dis how do the dispensations begin and end? Okay, Genesis chapter 1. The very first dispensation in Scripture, or you could say age. I'm going to say dispensation. Okay, Verses 1 and 3. Here, uh, 1 on to verse 3. Here, the Godhead in action. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did the first dispensation of Scripture begin? In the beginning, God created. God created. He spoke, and there it was. Okay? An event. Dramatic? Yes. And a beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, so how does the very first dispensation in Scripture begin? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the capital S, Spirit of God, there's the Holy Ghost, moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? Incidentally, these are not describing persons. Okay? We cover that in Wednesday's video. Verse 3. And God said, spoke. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Okay? Okay? You understand. Okay? So, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And of course, you can go to John chapter 1. Verses 1 under verse 15, and make the tie-ins yourself, okay? So, the very first dispensation in Scripture, the Garden of Eden, begins how? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Heaven, excuse me, and the earth. God said, the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, okay? That's quite a significant event. It's not a big bang or anything millions of billions of years between verses 1 and 2. The gap theory, that's stupid. Okay? But that's how it began. And <clears throat> how does this dispensation end? Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We're going, we want verses 22 on to verse 24. It began with a with a major event <laughs> in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. God said, okay, that's quite a significant event. Wouldn't you agree? How does the Garden of Eden dispensation end? Genesis 3, verses 22 and verse 24. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, which man was originally in create, which was originally created the mortal. But hold on. Therefore, the Lord God sent forth from the Garden of Eden, excuse me, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man 
and he placed it at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way to keep the way of the tree of life. And before that happened, okay, what happened? Number one, and we're going to get into this, but then we're going to kind of fly through this. The very first dispensation in Scripture, what were the requirements of it? Okay? The sleazy believest devils will tell you it's like, they do that, they, they, they say this. And they also say stuff like Adam was looking forward to the, to the cross. <sighs> and you see, you, you Christians fall for that. What were the conditions of the very first dispensation? By grace through faith. No, it wasn't. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Okay? And I, I think it, I think, I'm not sure, one of these sleazy believists that I was watching I want to say it was Mr. Sunken Eyed, but I can't verify that. One of the sleazy believers that I was aware of finally did admit. It's like, okay, yeah, in the Garden of Eden, it was works. But anything else, it's like, you've been teaching and preaching that it's by grace through faith from the beginning. Scripture is wrong. Your whole system is wrong. Give it up, okay? <laughs> Give it up, okay? But... What were the conditions of the very first dispensation? Verses 16 and 17 in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Man was created originally immortal. You can make a very valid argument, as Mr. Mo Titus Morris does, the, the Amish kid. I don't think he's saved. He's crazy. But anyway, <laughs> bless his heart. Okay, um, You can also make the very valid argument that man, at the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, was created at least vegetarian, possibly actually a vegan. Okay, you can make that valid argument. Wouldn't even, it's like, I, you know, personally, I think they were vegan at the very beginning, okay? Because everything was perfect. All the nutrients, because, you know, the flood hadn't happened yet, so everything was a lot, you know, hey, young Titus Morris, I, I, I saw your video. Uh, you, you talked about, well, man was originally created vegan. In a dispensation, at first, where there was no sin, and the earth was totally different than the one we have now. Same earth! You wicked people who teach that stupid gap theory. The same earth, but the climate was different. Okay? Men, man were living up to 900 years. Okay? After the flood, a lot of things changed. Okay? Alright? But see, verses 16 and 17 are what? Please you believe this. Come on. What is verse 16 and 17? Those are works. The very first dispensation of Scripture, the Garden of Eden, pure works. And here's another thing. Do you remember, uh, if you saw any of the other videos, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, what the definition of faith is? Should we, should we refresh ourselves? Let's refresh ourselves. Okay? Okay? Because, see, when you start saying it's by grace through faith throughout the entirety of Scripture, which it is not, we're going to show you that. Okay? Um, <laughs> uh, you're calling God a liar. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. And what is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Okay? That's what faith is. In the Garden of Eden, it was works. Don't do that. That's a work. Okay? It's work. 
And faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And this, this, this is a good verse. And they heard the voice of the Lord God. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why is that significant? <clears throat> Number one, a trinitary. How does a voice walk? Hmm? You, you might want to go to Genesis 1 verse 2, right? Uh, the, that's specific. The Spirit of God moved uh, um, uh, across the waters. Walking in the garden. See, some of you would get so petty to say, well, what does walking mean? And when you get, and brethren, when you run into someone that petty who's trying to just as if I anything they can to get away with their devilment, you don't want to hear it, dude. So, can I give you a track? No? Okay, you just go on believing just like the devils do, okay? You know, whatever. All right? How does a voice walk? Unless he has a body. Number two, this shows us that Adam and Eve saw God with their own, and they didn't have four eyes back then. I mean, four eyes between them, Adam and Eve, yes, but they, they saw God with their own eyes. Okay? So, turning <laughs> the... Oh, you sleazy believists, you make me sick. During the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation, it was works only. Don't do that. Guess what they did? Okay, don't do that. That's a work. They saw God with their eyes. He was walking, walking in the Garden of Eden himself. And what is the definition of faith? The evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Very first dispensation in Scripture was works alone, not by grace, through faith. Okay? God's grace was there because animals had to die in order to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness because they disobeyed and did what God said not to do. Okay? Something had to die in order to cover their nakedness. So a cataclysmic event, if you will, happened. That's how it ended. With a man being expelled from the Garden of Eden. Okay? All right? And remember, when you got these idiots telling you it's by grace, through faith, from beginning to end, you can prove them wrong immediately with what we just went through. Okay? Hence, they are not preaching to you the right gospel or the right God. Because a majority of them, I have yet to meet one who isn't of a free gracer. Um, most of them, I'm giving credit, maybe one of them isn't. Most of them are Trinitarians, too. Okay? So, the very first dispensation in Scripture began in the beginning God created. Okay? Obviously, a major event. How did it end? With man disobeying, going against the work that he was said that he shouldn't do. He did it anyway. Okay? And an animal had to die in order to cover their nakedness. Okay? And they got kicked out. Dispensation number one, beginning and end. So yes, it began with a major event and ended with a major event. The second dispensation. 
What is the second dispensation? The second dispensation is referred to as the patriarchal period. When did that begin? Genesis chapter, well, it began with the expulsion. As soon as Adam and Eve were kicked out, that was it. That dispensation was over. And here they are in the dispensation of the patriarchs. Genesis chapter 6. Now, there is a lot of people get confused about Noah. And even <laughs> Mr. Schofield, you know, by this time he's counting um, uh, the, the flood as the fifth dispensation. It's like, dude, dude, no, no, <laughs> no, okay, no, 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 okay. During this dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, it was similar to what we have today, but there were some major differences. And also keep in mind, dear friend, the dispensations are similar, never, never identical. Keep that in mind. There are similarities within dispensations. Absolutely. They are never identical. They're not. They are not. Okay? But, during this dispensation of the patriarchal period, God commanded like Noah, hey, what, what, Genesis 6, verses 8 on to verse 14. This is what signifies this dispensation. How did this dispensation begin? With the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Hence, beginning the second dispensation in Scripture, the patriarchal period. 8 on verse 14 in Genesis 6. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay? Noah didn't, have, did, Noah didn't do anything. He just found grace, just like Abraham did. Okay? All right? God is a God who chooses. Okay? All right? These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, the Asiatics, Ham, the Africans, and Japheth, the Europeans. Those are the three main kindreds that are on the earth. There are variations, okay? Variations, yes. And when you uh, go against what God says and mix kindreds, then you have all these variations, okay? Remaining for example, Japheth with Japheth, praise the Lord. Now, there are different skin color variations within Japheth, but they are Japhethian. Japheth with Japheth. Ham with Ham. Shem with Shem. Okay? Keep it within those boundaries. Some people get a little too nitpicky about that thing. Keep it simple. Ham with Ham. Shem with Shem. Japheth with Japheth. That's, that's good. Scriptural. Okay? That's, that's good. There's nothing racist about that. That's beautiful. That's God's design. God's a God of distinction. God's a God of distinction. And <laughs> with every dispensation, there is distinction. Okay? And see, the Tower of Babel or Babel, what happened there? Everybody wanted to clump everything together, make a name for themselves to reach up to heaven. Okay? So, again, instruction and righteousness here a little bit. When you don't rightly divide the word of truth and clump everything together, you make a mess of things. You blur distinction, and you are saying that ye are gods knowing good and evil. Comprende? But let's continue reading. Verse 11. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, pay attention, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, 
and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now, why is this significant? There are those out there who I've encountered who say, well, the, dis the dispensation of the patriarchal period is identical to the one we have today. Blah. No, it is not. No, it isn't. Okay? God's grace is in every dispensation. And yes, Noah found grace, unmerited favor of the Lord, the better blessing the lesser. Okay? That's right there. But, verse 14 is integral. God was going to destroy the earth. He didn't actually destroy the earth itself. He just killed everything on it. Okay? Except, you know, like the fishies and stuff like that. Okay? But he did. Okay? This is the first earth still. Okay? This isn't the second or the third. I've got to write that one down. Uh, this, it's none of that nonsense. Okay? None of that. None of that. This is the first earth. We'll prove this at, near the end of the video. Okay? But... But there was a uh, there was a part of obedience required in that dispensation, and plus the faith was in what God was going to do. Noah didn't do anything to merit God's grace. God's grace came before verse nine. Okay, all right. This is true. But there was an element of obedience as required because he said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now, Noah could have willy-nilly and we would have a totally different thing here. But God, you know, found, Noah found grace. God said, hey, I'm going to destroy everything. Do this. So see, there is an element of a required obedience in that dispensation. And also during the patriarchal period there was no one sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? That's for this dispensation. And the Holy Ghost, the Lord was not a permanent resident in anyone. Okay? Okay? That are, those are the major differences between this dispensation of the patriarchs and the dispensation that we have today. Again, they are similar, but not identical. Okay? Don't be confused about that. Okay? And also we have to go to uh, look at verse 22 uh, to uh, back this up. Verse 22 in Genesis 6. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Okay? Alright? They had a requirement to do as the Lord said. Okay? Alright? That was there within this dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? Alright? But now, go to Genesis 12, the well-known verses 1 on verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, and you read Genesis 11, Abram was of Shem. Okay? The Hebraic people, the Hebraic line, is, which was what our Lord was establishing in this dispensation, was taken from Shem, not Ham or Japheth, taken from Shem and established out of Shem, as the Hebraic Jewish line. Okay? A Hamite, it is impossible for a Hamite to be a Hebrew. It is impossible for a Japhethite to be a Hebrew. Certain of the Shemites are, it is impossible to be a Hebrew. Some of them. Okay? Remember, the Hebraic people were selected out of Shem, kind of like right here, and made the Hebraic line from which Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? You understand? Good. Because we're not going to get off on that. But Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out, Hebrew, 
of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house the pen and the marker or a gel don't use a marker onto a land that I will shew thee their faith was in what God was going to do okay that is why there is no difference in the dispensation when it comes to Noah because people in the patriarchal period were all made right with God the same way. There is no change in how man was made right with God when it comes to Noah. Mr. Schofield messes that one up. Okay? No, no. God's grace is in every dispensation. How man is made right and or saved is what determines the dispensation. There was no change in that with Noah to Abraham. There was none. Hence, and I, I, and I understand why some might get messed up with this. That is why you do not count the end of that dispensation at Noah. Because they're still made right with God the same way. Okay? But, it was to a land that I will shew thee unto Abraham. And I will, and I will mark these I wills. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Look at those I wills. One, two, three, four. Four. And in John chapter one, there are four capital L light. I don't remember the significance of four offhand, but there are five I wills in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. Five is always associated with, with the number of death. Okay? And who gave those five I wills? Oh, that'd be Lucifer. And you can tie in like Tony Robbins or success is doing what you want, when you want, when you want, blah, blah, blah. It's five things. Five I wills. Okay? The Lord has four of them. Tie that in with John chapter 1 and the four capital L lights. Okay? All right? Okay? So, God chose Noah. God chose Abraham and called them out. Okay? And their faith was in what God was going to do. And the fact that the Lord called Abram out, it's like, hey, do this. Abram found grace in the eyes of God, okay? Chosen of God, all right? Yes, he was. It's not this Calvinistic nonsense. Calvinist, Calvinism is a satanic heresy. Stay away from it, especially cross dressing Calvinism, Okay? Watch out for stuff like that. Okay? But, okay, nothing changed with how they were made right with God from Noah to Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? God chose them without any of their merit. Okay? But there was also an aspect of a required obedience. Make, a, make an ark. Get out from your people. I will destroy the earth. I will shoot thee. Okay? All right? And Scripture verifies that. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, a Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith. Now that's a reference of, you know, making of the faith of the law. But see, also the law, what was the faith in God, what God was going to do. Okay, we'll explain later. But a faith in what God was going to do to faith what God has done it is finished okay as it is written the just shall live by faith okay so 
the dispensation of the patriarchs began how? With a major event, man got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Okay? Similar to this dispensation we are in, but with some major differences. Remember, dispensations are never identical. Never identical. Okay? They're not. They are similar. And I, and I know my dear young brother, uh, uh, I know he'll be like, he's going to be, I, I, that's why I love this guy so much. He's like, okay, I'm going to check that out. And he will. And he will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for any of you who was like, ah, I'm going to check this out. Good. Good. I think some of you start need to start doing that. But it began with a major event. Man getting booted out of the garden. How did it ends. Exodus chapter 12. <coughs> Exodus chapter 12. Verses 37 on to verse 51. The Passover. A major event. That's how the dispensation of the patriar patriarchal period ended. Began with man being expelled from the Garden of Eden. Major event. It ended with the Passover. The Passover lamb. Which we already mentioned about the blood on the side posts and, and up top there. The killing of the lamb and the passing over of the angel of death. A major event. Israel was taken out of Egypt. They were exodus. Okay? That's how the dispensation of the patriarchs ended. Okay? With a major event. Began, first dispensation began with a major event, ended with a major event. The second dispensation began from the ending of that first major event, and it ended with the Passover, Exodus. And the lamb had to die. So many tie-ins with the cross and whatnot like that. Okay? So, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. Doesn't even say anything about the women. We probably are talking about close to 2 million people with everybody. Whatever. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. People will look at that mixed multitude, so there were Gentiles. There may have been some, may, you can't really prove that in Scripture, but mixed multitude. What does that mean? Men, women, and children. Okay? And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And that's significant because when you read Genesis 15, 7 on verse 15, pause the video. You look that up. I got it written down. We're not going to go over that because we're, trying, we're trying to glean through this. Okay, But that is a fulfillment of Scripture. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Verses 7 on to verse 15. Okay? That's a fulfillment of Scripture there. Okay? Prophecy fulfilled. <clears throat> now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt in a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of, from the land of Egypt, that it, that is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Again, right there when people like, well, the mixed multitude, there could have been, no, no, no. That's like when people say in Acts 2 that there were Gentiles there in Acts 2. No, there weren't. No, there, that would be contrary to Scripture. There were no Gentiles there. 
Okay, it's to the Jew first, and then to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay, that is verified. There were no Gentiles uh, in Acts chapter two in that whole thing there. There was no Gentiles there. Okay. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. Now see the ordinance to come. That wasn't about the hired servants and whatnot. Wasn't there at that moment. But that was for the future Passovers going on forward and forward and forward. Okay? In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Crucifixion. There's no bones broken. Okay? Now see this again. The Passover, there are types of the crucifixion. But Moses, the children of Israel had no knowledge of the current dispensation and the method thereof. Don't believe that lie. Okay? And when a stranger... Okay. All right. Verse 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, become a Jew. Okay? Yes, others can become Jews. We've, we've discussed that before. Many videos proving that. It's who's a Hebrew. A Jew is someone who can, you know, keeps the law. What is a Hebrew? Scripturally, a Jew is a Hebrew. We've, we've covered that before. Any questions, go to the Jewish Hebraic. The very first two videos, what is a Jew, will answer those questions for you. Okay, let's go. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. A kind of a grafting in. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. It came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So, pardon me, getting a little parched here. So, second dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, began with the expulsion from the Garden of Eden, ended with the Exodus. And during that dispensation, it was similar to what we have today, but not identical. Okay, which we've already explained. So, the first and second dispensation began with a uh, major event and ended with a major event. Third dispensation. What is the third dispensation? Exodus chapter 20. The law, which was faith and works okay it was not by grace through faith during the law uh, 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 Elmer from New York where well, he made a video that well the the sacrifices were just what did he say objects of faith or something no no the Jesuit uh, inquisitor you know no no it was faith and works okay faith and works Similar to the time of Jacob's trouble. But remember, also under the law, no one was eternally secure. Okay? You read in the books of the kings and the prophets, the Spirit of God could come, go, come, go. Like the devil charismatics want you to believe today that the Holy Ghost comes and goes, comes and goes. It doesn't work like that today. That's how it was under the law. There was no eternal security <clears throat> under the law. There was none. Okay? People could lose salvation under the law. Okay? Number two. Christ had yet to die, bury, and rise again 
the third day according to the scripture. Okay? It was faith and works. What was their faith in? That God would honor them and declare them right for doing the things of the law. Again, the faith was in what God was going to do, not what he had already done. Okay? So, <clears throat> Exodus 20, verses 1, on to verse 17. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out to the land of Egypt. Once they went out, and the Passover uh, thing was killed, uh, that began the dispensation of the law. Here's the actual giving of it, okay? And the Catholics messed this up because they're all about, about the, their idols. They removed the second commandment. You can check this out. I mean, get yourself a catechism, okay? They, they messed this up, okay? But they take the tenth commandment, which is covetousness, and make it two. And they remove the one about the idols because Catholics are all... Attack the halls with ball. <laughs> okay, never mind. They're all about their little idols. Okay? So. And the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt, and this is the one they remove. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Catholicism is loaded with graven images. Why would they remove this one? Oh, gee, I wonder. Okay? Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, the Jesus fish. Okay? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. There's a difference between jealousy and envy. Okay? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath was a specific sign given unto the Jewish people, you Seventh day Adventists. Okay? Hey! If you want to have the actual Sabbath, which is Saturday, you want to take that day and make it your day to be, you know, to worship the Lord, knock yourself out. Go right ahead. The minute you start saying today that it's still required, you're lying. And you're a heretic. Okay? You are. It's not a requirement for us today. It was specifically a requirement for the Hebraic Jews, okay, all right, and even in the Hebraic Jews today, it is not a requirement, Acts chapter 15, read that on your own time, okay, <clears throat> it is not, we are not required, neither are the Jews required to keep the Sabbath today salvifically, they're not required, it's not a requirement, okay, all right, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. For in six days, not seven, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, and Catholicism bumps those up to two commandments. Okay? Uh, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. The giving of the law. Now, what about the law? The law was perfect. Yes, it was. The law was perfect. It was the perfect requirements of God. 
And they were given that because, guess what? No one, no one, not even Mark the Messenger, no one can keep the commandments perfectly. Have you ever looked at a woman or a man, if you're a woman, looked at a man with eyes and undressed them? No, I haven't. You lie in your breast, stink. Go away. Okay? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever cheated? Have you ever coveted? <laughs> okay? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Uh, like it says in James, if you keep all these, but yet if you offend at one point, you've done blown it. Why did God give us the law? Or give, excuse me, not us. Why did God give the law? To show, number one, what his perfect, perfect requirements to make him happy were. And also to show you that man could not do it. There was only one man who could, who just happened to be God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He was the only man who could. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified because he never sinned and kept the law perfectly. Okay? All right? Okay? Hey, are you with me? Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verse uh, 7 on verse 14. Romans 7. 7 on verse 14. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid <clears throat> Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Okay? You didn't know that it said that in the Ten Commandments, and then you find out, it's like, what I'm doing is wrong? I, I didn't know. That... That's ignorance. That can be cured. Well, a little doesn't hurt. Oh, that, you're, you're rightly dividing that. That's heresy. Now that's stupidity. Okay? That's stupidity. Willfully ignorant. Don't want to know the truth. That's stupid. Okay? Let's continue. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Once I found out that I'm not supposed to do that, Paul was like, oh, the purpose of the law, to show you that at your best, your vanity, you couldn't keep God's perfect commandments even if you tried. Even if a gun was held to your head, at your wife and child's head, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. And there are actually Christians out there claim that they can. Yeah. Yeah. The only credit that I will ever give one of these sleazy believers is when they come when it comes to guys talking about keeping the law today, uh, some of the sleazy believers that I have seen are very good at refuting that about keeping the law today. They are, I'll give it credit where it's due. Okay, uh, uh, even Sunken Eye, he, he did a, vi a really good video about, I think it was him, about how, no, you don't, you couldn't keep the law today even if you tried. Even, I think it was him, okay? That's why I respect him out of all my enemies. I give him respect, okay? But never mind, okay? For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, life, to keep you away from those things that God didn't like, like or didn't want you to do. I found unto death. That's a contradiction. No, it isn't. The law itself was ordained unto life. It says so right there. God's perfect requirements. But it was unto death. Why? Because he couldn't do it. That which I do, I allow not. But that which I hate, that do I. Nobody can keep the law perfectly. Only God manifest in the flesh. Only God could. Hence, the law was to show you your inadequacy and at your best, you couldn't do perfectly what he required. 
okay? But like I said, this is nuts and bolts. But you Christians aren't getting taught this. Okay, you're not! You're not! You're not! Okay, now, you know, there are some of the King James guys, yes, but Christianity in its entirety is not being taught this. It's not! Okay? It's not. All right, where, to, uh, where were we going to read to here? Got a little uh, sidetracked there. Uh, verse 14. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin. See Paul's like no the law wasn't death. The fact that I couldn't keep it. That's the death. Okay. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which was good. This isn't contradictory. The law is perfect good. God's perfect requirement. You can't do it. You can't. And if you say you do, you're a liar. Your breath stink. Ooh, oh, you're, you're a little Christ, huh? That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. Okay? And of course, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. This thing about the law, you don't keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, and uh, be right with God. Okay? Acts chapter 15. But Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 and on to 12. For as many as the works of the law, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And you can cross reference on your own time, Deuteronomy 27, verses 15 on to verse 26. Pause the video, check that out on your own time. We ain't going to do that today, okay? All right, and where, where are we? Okay. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But it was faith and works in that dispensation, you say, right? Yes. What was the faith in? That God would honor you for doing the law. See, the law itself, you didn't need faith to keep the law. You could see it. It was actually written, starting to be written, the Ten Commandments, and also with uh, the five books of, of Moses, the Torah, okay, as it's called, all right? Not the thing with the, uh, the well, as the Hasidic rabbi called the Torah today. Okay, but whatever, okay? But see, the law itself was actual, you could see it, okay? Hence, you didn't need faith. But the faith was in God honoring you for keeping the law. Hence, your faith wasn't in the law in and of itself. It was in God and what he would do when you did it his way. See, that's the faith and works, which was the law. Okay? And the law is not a faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay? Okay? Now, Hebrews chapter 9. The law was binding for many years. I think something like almost, um, almost 4,000, I think. I think. Okay? Because the earth is now, what, 7,000 years old? Everybody keeps saying it's six, but I think, I actually think by now, the earth is actually like 7,000 years old. Not millions and billions like some even these Christians believe. Okay? Definitely the earth is not millions and billions of years old. But, what are we doing? Hebrews chapter 9. Now, the dispensation of the law began with the dramatic event of what? The exodus. How did 
the dispensation of the law end. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1, on verse 10. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. First covenant, says there specifically. Okay, covenant. What covenant is that? Well, I have the worldly. It's talking about the, uh, the, the Mosaic covenant. Okay, the Abrahamic covenant, uh, which was before that, is totally different. We're not going to go off on that. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the shewbread, which is called the sanctuary, and that was all given under the law. Okay? And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. That's what was in the Ark. And other and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, the, now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went in always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went they went the high priest alone once a year on Yom Kippur, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, Lord is that spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest, holiest of all was not yet made manifest, well, as the first tabernacle was standing. Let's read that verse again. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing. There are some people, and I've actually had some pretty good um, discussions with some brethren about this. Some have made mentions like, well, don't you think David knew about the cross? I mean, look at the Christological Psalms, right? That is a decent argument. But it was not made manifest while the first tabernacle was standing. He prophesied. David didn't know specifically what he was prophesying of as far as the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. No, he didn't. That's a good argument that I have encountered. Not argument. We've actually discussed it and went through scripture. It's like, don't you think David knew about the cross? No. He, had, he described it. Yes, he did. And the Lord quoted the Psalms. Yes, he did. David still didn't know. He didn't. which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings, works, and carnal fleshly ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Protestant Reformation. Until the time of Reformation. How did the dispensation of the law end? Hmm? How? Let's read now from verse 11 on to verse 17. See, the law began with a uh, major event, the Exodus. How did it end? But Christ began being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Yes, it was perfect because his flesh was sinful, but he kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh never sinned. Hence, it was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he answered once Catholic into the holy place, 
having obtained eternal redemption for us. I say once Catholic because what is the way for cookie? Uh, uh, to the Catholic, they're crucifying Christ again. Oh, Catholicism. <clears throat> for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God he never sinned even though his flesh itself was sinful yes Jesus Christ is come in the flesh okay genius all right but without spot he never sinned hence that sinful flesh was sanctified Brilliant, right? Keep reading. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Yes, dead, because you had to keep doing them. Hey, you guys who want to keep the law today, uh, why aren't you cutting off uh, pigeons' heads and sacrificing turtles? Okay, why? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Hey, Tom, you idiot. When did the New Testament begin? That guy said, oh, what? Uh, the Council of Nicaea figures that coadjutor would say something like that, that imbecile. But, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called the way of the cross might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. You notice how Moses died before they went into the promised land? Yeah, came to this man, just mentioning that. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. The New Testament began with the death of the testator. And see, this is something that the sleazy believists hate. They mention the death of Christ. But see, you, in order to be right with God, saved, have to die to yourself. You cannot be fixed unless you are broken. You cannot be born again unless you die. Okay? That is a principle throughout Scripture that sleazy believism free grace denies. Okay? How did the dispensation of the law end? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 1 on to verse 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if okay. <clears throat> All right. By which ye are also saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Thane believers, easy believists. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture. The law ended with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, 
that brought in this current dispensation that you and I are now in, which is by grace through faith. What is the object of faith for us today? Hmm? What is the object of faith? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who we cannot see. He obtained our salvation. He is our salvation. When he said it is finished, our faith is in Christ, in the fact that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. As I sum it up, what is our faith in today? It's finished. It's finished. Okay? Under the law, the faith was in God that he would honor you for keeping the law. Under the dispensation of the patriarchs, the faith was in what God was going to do also a similarity between the patriarchs and the law. Okay? And guess what? In the very first dispensation, they saw God up. They didn't need faith. Okay? So, the law began with the exodus, ended with the death, burial, and resurrection, the crucifixion of Jesus. Quite an event. Even the calendars, the days of the week, even the time was all altered because of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's A.D., after death, not um, before Common Era, after Common Era. I've even heard it referred to before they did that, uh, uh, before Christian Exodus, which was like, what? 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 Hello? What? 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 I, I heard that before. You don't hear that anymore. Uh, some of you might remember that originally it's like, well, before the Christian exodus, after the Christian exodus. What? What? <laughs> well, I, I'm that, that one, you know, uh, after common era, before common era, as they say nowadays. But uh, no, it's A.D. B.C. before Christ, A.D. after death. Okay? Our whole everything is based off of that major event. Okay? Major, major event. Hence, the fourth dispensation. Dispensation of light. Okay? Remember the four I wills? The four capital L lights in the book of John, chapter 1? Okay? Fourth dispensation. Okay? All right? We have here, I wrote down Galatians chapter 3. Okay, Galatians chapter 3. All right? The law served its purpose. What was the purpose of the law? What was the purpose of the law? Galatians chapter 3 now. We will read verses 13. Um, <clears throat> verses 13. On to the close. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, as it is written. Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the capitalist spirit through faith. Okay? Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed, and the Abraham seeds video will be in the description box were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of, as of many, but as of one, and thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? The previous video, our dear young brother made some beautiful comments, which I will point out for y'all. Whatever. 
beautiful. Check out, check out his comments, okay? He is a one, if you have a question, if I don't get to it, uh, he is a one who is capable of answering your questions about this as well, okay? so, just so you know. Is the law there, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, you might be like, well, Brad, that's a contradiction with what we just read. No, it isn't. Okay? No, it isn't. You couldn't keep the law perfectly. It was ordained to life to keep you away, but guess what? Man couldn't do it. Okay? Okay, that's what that means. It's not a contradiction. Verily, righteousness should have been by the law, but man can't keep the law perfectly. No one can. Only God manifests in flesh. Only he could. Okay? But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Here's more proof that under the law, they weren't looking forward to the cross. They didn't know about it. Okay? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You're not under the law. We are under the law to Christ, which is described in Romans chapter 13. Go check that out on your own time. There's no keeping of the Sabbath. Okay? Just, just so you know. Okay? All right? All right? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, if you are saved. For as many of you as have been baptized in the Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek salvithically. There is neither bond nor free, salvithically. There is neither male nor female, salvithically. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed video will be in the description box for you. Okay? Alright? Now, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, there are very significant things about this dispensation, which is why this dispensation is until the seventh dispensation, eternity, uh, which is overall the greatest of the dispensations, obviously. But this dispensation is marked by things that are only specific for this dispensation. Ephesians 2, verses 1 and verse 10. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who are dead in trespasses and sins. If you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name, he saves you, he seals you until the day of redemption. Okay? Once saved, always saved. So this is talking about people who were lost but are now saved. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, verse 2 this, uh, just says what I said, okay? According to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, people who hear the truth and reject it, are not saved brethren who get messed up, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, unregenerate people, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love, wherewith he loved us, gave, okay, past tense, all right? Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved, which free gracers know absolutely nothing about. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, that in the Ages to come. Yeah. Rightly divided. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace 
unmerited favor, the better blessing the lesser. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. What works are those? The works of the law, lest any man should boast. Because under the law, it's like, well, I've, I've, I keep kosher, I've done this, I've done that. Ah, oh, but you did this. Okay? Catholics, I've been confirmed. I've had the cookie. I drank the wine. I did this. I, I've had a good confession. Depart from me. You who work in iniquity. I never knew you. Okay? For we are his workmanship, new creature in Christ, created in Christ Jesus on two good works, living as ambassadors for Christ, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? Now, like I said, this dispensation is very unique because look in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 12 under verse 14 that we should be the pray be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted after that ye he ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom af also after that ye believed ye were sealed sealed once saved always saved Mr. Eric lying heart okay eternally secure you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you he seals you once saved always saved okay ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise okay. and the Lord is that spirit when God prized of spirit soul and body okay friendly good which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. What is the redemption of the purchased possession? It is erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. And you're right. Rapture is not in Scripture. And when you look at the definition of what rapture encompasses, it's, it's not the redemption of the purchased possession. So when a critic comes to you, rapture isn't in the Bible. But you're right. And it's definitely not in the Scripture either. You're right. You're right. Rapture is not in the Scriptures. You're right. Bravo. The redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Or being caught up for the time of Daniel's 70th week. Okay? Alright? In this dispensation, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. When you come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, he seals you with himself unlike any dispensation before there is a similarity a slight similarity in the following dispensation after this one that we are in but we'll explain okay once saved always saved and the significance of the redemption of the purchased possession just to name a few christ died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures our calendars are focused around the death, burial, and resurrection. It's A.D. It's 2023 A.D., not A.C.E. Okay? All right? It's A.D., after death. Okay? This dispensation. Where us Gentiles, we already read in Ephesians 3 and also in Colossians, okay? Uh, you can watch the video about the um, how us Gentiles, the Romans 11 video, about how we are grafted in, okay? This is 
the mo one of besides eternity. This is the one of the most significant periods in history, one of the most significant dispensations. Because it is by grace through faith, you don't have to keep the law. God lives within you permanently. You can't lose what isn't yours in the first place. It is the gift of God. And if you are saved, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And if you are alive and remain to the catching away, okay, this dispensation is significant also because it is the easiest dispensation in where someone can be saved and made right with God. The problem is there has to be a death to yourself, dear friend. That's when you got guys booting the door out of the way. That's when you get the Mark the Messengers. Then you get the guys like Crazy Yates and, and a smack a jack and, and all those idiots. Okay? Then you get those guys who want to conveniently whoo -whoo, skip over required brokenness and contrition. And they do stuff like, oh, those are works. That, blah, 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 blah. No, no. They are offering you a gospel without death to self. They're offering you another Jesus, usually a trinity, and they're giving you another gospel where you save yourself. Sleazy believism is a works-based salvation because what is the object of their faith? Their faith! Just like the Christian scientists, just like the Kenneth Dopelins, because they all have the same mother. Okay? They are true work salvationists. Never mind Calvinism, them guys are crazy. Okay? But this is the easiest dispensation wherein you can get saved. The hard part is getting over yourself. Okay? That's the hard part. This dispensation began as the dispensation of the law ended with a major event which changed everything. Okay? Which changed everything. The death, burial, and resurrection. The death of the test David of our Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father. And that is the dispensation that we are currently in. Okay? And see, when you try to take something from the dispensation of the law, and make it per and try to make it pertinent salvifically today, that's heresy. You try to do that with the time of the patriarchs, with today, it's heresy. You try to do it with the, the time of Jacob's trouble and make it applicable today, it is heresy. Okay? This is why it's important to rightly divide the word of truth. Because the heresies that many of you are encountering are people taking things from other dispensations and trying to make them applicable for today self-ethically. It doesn't work like that. You are not made right today the way you were under the law. You are not made right today the way they were in the patriarchal period. And of course, you're not made right today by the way they were in the Garden of Eden. And vice versa with the dispensations themselves. Okay, This isn't Brain surgery. This isn't rocket science here. It isn't. Is it? No, it isn't. But how does this dispensation end? How? How? Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. <laughs> Don't let somebody from Oregon Try to tell you that Paul was writing for another dispensation within 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Don't let anyone tell you that uh, he was writing for another dispensation. Because the sleazy believers do the same thing with Romans uh, 9, 10, and 11. Well, Paul was writing for the time of Jacob's trouble. Like someone else has, I don't know if he did. I get this, like, get away. Get, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but uh, he actually believed that, yeah, uh, Paul was writing for the time of Jacob's trouble here in Second Thessalonians uh, verses 1 on verse 12, which we are going to look at. How does this dispensation end? 
that's getting ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> uh, Second Thessalonians. Well, no, no, it's not. How does it end? Revelation chapter four, verse one. And after this, I looked, and behold, the door. Jesus is the door was opened in heaven. Watch out for guys on Odyssey whose channel's name are boot the door. Yeah, yeah that, the door is Jesus. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That is the redemption of the purchased possession. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day not, shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Falling away is not saved people being messed up. Falling away are those who claimed that they were of us, but they were made manifest that they are not of us. Many people cling, try to cling to the body of Christ through flatteries, but then when things come and happen, you know, they get revealed, hey, you were never saved in the first place. Falling away is not saved brethren getting messed up. That happened even during the scriptures. Okay? That's not what it is. Falling away are those who claimed that they were of us, but guess what? They are being made manifest that they ain't. Okay? That's the falling away. Don't let someone lie to you and try to tell you otherwise. Why would they do that? To cover their own backside. Okay? So let's continue. But is there a falling away going on right now? Yeah. <clears throat> let no man deceive you by any means. For that they shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he as God, sitting in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Hinge that. Why? Because there, right there, is evidence that there is going to be a third rebuilt temple during the time of Jacob's trouble, which I personally believe we, they have the means to put that thing up quick. Uh, there are those that's like, well, they couldn't do it today and it would take years. No, it wouldn't. If they wanted to, they could probably at the most get that temple built in a year. Today. So, and once the body of Christ is taken out of the way, then uh, that man of sin with the pockets of the Vatican they're going to get that temple built muy rápido. Well, let's continue. Okay? So, verse 4 shows us that there's going to be a third rebuilt temple, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. Does not appear in Scripture. I'll give you $1,000 of my money that I do not have, you give me the verse from the authorized version, verbatim, the Antichrist. Show it to me. It's not there. But, you can find it. I'll give you a thousand bucks that I don't have. Good luck. Okay? Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now... Ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, who's the he? Will only he who now letteth will let, let means to hinder, until he be taken out of the way. Hey, Mr. Eric Lying Fart. Okay, you don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. You're a Jesuit coadjutor's pond scum devil. But the he is not God. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. Okay? And omniscient. Okay? Alright, the thing about that Jesus didn't know the day or the hour. 
that Eric the Lion fart guy. Uh, just what an idiot! What a filthy idiot! Okay, um, they are our. They are our. Okay, sorry, writing that down. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, the, yeah. It's not God that's going anywhere. Who is the He who now letteth until He be taken out of the way? That be those who are purchased for the purchased possession, the redemption of the purchased possession. The body of Christ is what is taken out of the way. Okay? Not God. God's not going anywhere. It's His body, the body of Christ. The redemption of the purchased possession. That's what ends this dispensation. That's going to change everything. Let's continue. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That spirit of Antichrist is out there right now. And there is a falling away. All right? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who's the he that's taken out of the way? Us, the body of Christ. Okay? Erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation. Sure. Okay? But we get taken out first. We already looked at it in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. I'm up hither. You can go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the entire chapter of Ephesians chapter 1, which is actually the preferred one you can use. Okay? Uh, it's throughout Scripture. Uh, the Scripture of the New Testament about the redemption of the purchased possession in the Pauline epistles. Okay? We are going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Stop. There are those, like I heard Robert Breaker say this. It's like he believes that, you know, we are going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition, and then the redemption happens. No. The redemption happens then. And then that wicked. Then and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Talking about his second coming. So, it's a falling away going on. The redemption of the purchased possession happens. Then, after we get caught up, then that man of sin, son of perdition, be revealed. We, the body of Christ, are not going to be here on the earth to see that man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. We get taken up. Okay? We get caught up. As long as we, the body of Christ, are on the earth, that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist, okay, I kind of light up, go light on that one because that's whatever, but facts are facts. The Antichrist doesn't appear. What do you do with that? I don't use it. Whatever. But we go up, he gets revealed. It's not he gets revealed, we go up. No. No. Or else that's a contradiction. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming, talking about his second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the redemption of the purchased possession ends this dispensation that you and I are in. And then what comes after that? Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verses 6 on to verse 11. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. 
but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and, and, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, whom I will raise up to them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from, their, from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have, have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, I will not leave thee altogether unpunished. We get caught up. That brings in the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is there for the correction of Israel, not the purification of the church, like Rome tells you. Okay? The dispensation that happens after this one it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It is a seven-year period of purification of the Jews. And during this time, it is going to be a time. Unbelievable. And here's the danger. Sleazy believists tell you, they do, that during the time of Jacob's trouble, that it's by grace through faith. These are guys who also say that you are able to take the mark of the beast. Kent Hovind says that. Uh, John MacArthur says that. Uh, Robert Breaker and Gene Kim say that. Okay. They say, well, you can cut off your hand. and get, That is not true. Okay. Once you take the mark of the beast, which is in your right hand or in your forehead, excuse me, i got something in my eye, you're done for. You've, t you've punched your ticket to hell. But, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 and verse 5. This is the fifth dispensation, I believe, and teach. Five, associated with death. There are some out there who say that this is the six because six is the number of man. I disagree with that. But, verses 1 on to verse 5. Here in Revelation chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. You look up Revelation 7, verses 1 under verse 8. The 144,000 sealed Jews of the tribes of Israel. Okay, that's Revelation 7, verses 1 under verse 8. You check that out on your own time. Okay? But during the time of Jacob's trouble, the only ones who are going to be eternally secure are the 144,000 Jews. Those are the only ones who are eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble. And when you got a sleazy believer saying you're eternally secure by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're lying to you. And they're trying to deceive you when you get left behind to damn you by taking that mark of the beast in your hand or in your forehead. Okay? It is not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. It is a reversion back to the law, but not identically. Verse 2, And I heard the voice, a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, within this dispensation. That's what that means. Rightly dividing. Okay? 
and their mouth was and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Okay? The hundred and forty four thousand, we looked at this because People will say, well, you're once saved, always saved, sealed uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. No, you're not. Only the 144,000 Jews are. Everyone else isn't. Okay? Now, if you're a Hebrew and you're one of the 144,000 Jews, uh, that's good for you. But 144,000 out of the millions that are going to be left behind, I don't know. <laughs> okay? But it's the only the 144,000 Jews, Hebraic Jews, that are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. They are the only ones. Okay? You are not saved by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're saying that to you so when you're in the time of Jacob's trouble, Christian, you're going to take this, like, well, i got to feed my family. So, hey, hey, you, hey, they say I can cut my hand off or gouge it out, so I'll be fine. No, no. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. Revelation 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. And he causeth all that man of sin the son of perdition, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. 666, which equates to www, which equates to World Wide Web. Mark in the right hand or in their forehead. Computer chip of some kind. Barcode, I don't know. But it's in your right hand or in your forehead. You got people saying about gold and silver. Gold and silver is scriptural currency. But you read James, the book of James, that gold and silver is canker. Gold and silver doesn't canker. What does that mean? It's not being used. If our American economy collapsed today, what are you going to do? Take your troy ounce thing of silver and go to Walmart? How, what's the exchange rate? No. Satan has to implement the mark of the beast. Gold and silver is not going to be valuable during the time of Jacob's trouble so he can implement the mark of the beast. Okay? There has to be an exchange rate. All right? But that damns you to hell. Revelation 14, verses 6 on to verse 12 now. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Everlasting gospel. This one these heretics will say, see, by grace or faith. No. What is this gospel? It's not grace by faith. We're going to prove that as we keep reading. But what is this gospel? That would be the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The dispensation that is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's keep reading. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, Rome, not Jerusalem, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, this verse specifically, if any man, guess what, Christian, that includes you. Because I personally believe that man of sin during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be calling you Christians. I, I believe that. Because what's Christ? Okay? If any man... Well, what about the 144,000? Uh, they're not any men. In a dispensation of the... which is uh, faith and works, they're the 144,000. 
sealed, okay, hello, okay, if any man, excluding, of course, 144,000, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, you worship the beast and his image when you take that mark. And see, what the sleazy believers and the rest of these Christians are trying to do to you is to fool you and deceive you when we get taken out of the way and they're left behind with you. They're going to be lying to you. It's by grace through faith. That way, they're going to damn you to hell when you take that mark. Okay? That's why you got to hate these guys, especially what they teach. Okay? All right? If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke, Mr. Golfing Idiot, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever, and you guys who believe in soul annihilationism, forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. During the time of Jacob's trouble, what, what begins to the time of Jacob's trouble? The end of this dispensation, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Under this dispensation, the time check of trouble, they're going to, there's going to be a third temple. The law is going to be temporarily reinstituted with the sacrificial system. That man of sin, son of perdition, in some way, I believe, three and a half years, within the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to go into that third rebuilt temple, as we already looked at in 2 Thessalonians, and he's going to declare, I am. And I believe he's going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Absolutely. Okay? During this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark, you're damned to hell. Taking off your hand doesn't solve it. Gouging it out of your head doesn't solve it. You take that mark, you are messed up. Your ticket is punched. And see... Sleazy believe us that say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. The purpose is to do that is to damn you to hell when you get left behind and go into the time of Jacob's trouble. And hey, well, you gotta provide for your family. Don't worry, you're once saved, always saved by grace through faith today. And you take that mark there or there, you're damned to hell. That's why these evil devils are doing that. You mustn't people. You mustn't believe them. Now, this is a very short dispensation. Now, what differs about this thing about faith and works is the death, burial, and resurrection has already happened. What is their faith in? Hmm? Their faith during the time of Jacob's trouble is in that Christ will be coming back. Okay? Death, burial, and resurrection has already happened. That was one. That was the most significant event in history. Okay, the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, it, it was. That had already happened. It's finished. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is not by grace through faith. The body of Christ is not on the earth. The only ones that are sealed are the 144,000 Jews. Anyone else can lose salvation. And if you take the mark, you're you're done. Okay, you're done. All right? All right? But their faith, they're going to be keeping the law, but what is their faith going to be in? Eventually, that Christ will come back at his second coming. What ends the time of Jacob's trouble? Revelation 19. Dramatic, significant event. Just as, just as the uh, dispensation of this dispensation began with the death, burial, and resurrection. A major event. What's the major event that ends the time of Jacob's trouble? Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. 
and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his, and on his head were many crowns. And you compare this with uh, Revelation chapter 6, 1 and 2, where that man of sin has a crown on his head, uh, but Jesus has many crowns. Okay, This is the Lord. This is the second coming. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God, one of seven times only the capital W Word of God appears. Okay? Capital W Word of God is always a reference scripturally onto the Lord Jesus Christ. And your NIV, your uh, LSD, uh, they, they only has six. Why? Because they take out the Johannian comma, 1 John 5, 7. You have a you have the wrong book if you have something that is not the scripture. Okay, let's continue. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us. That's us. See, we get redeemed. We come back at the second coming. Right there. We are part of the armies. You and I, brother, sister, we go up. When we come back down with our Lord Jesus Christ at His second coming, we're His army. See? See, that's how that works. People, you want to get saved today. You want to be saved today. Okay? And out of His mouth goeth a sharp sword. There have been misinterpretations where the Lord actually has a literal physical sword. And I've, had, I've seen pictures of that, of Him like hitting things. No. This is the sword of the Spirit that says that in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, I believe that is. Uh, someone will help me out in the description, in the comment section with that. But the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. He's going to be judging how? According to His Word. That's what that means. The sword coming out of His mouth. This is the sword of the Spirit. Okay, he's going to be judging according to what? It is written. It is written. It is written. And see, if you miss the redemption of the purchased possession, it's going to re be reverting similarly back to the law, and that's what you are going to be judged by. You want to be saved today. But see again, it is not identical as it was during the time of the law of Moses. Because, because, you got the 144,000 and the death, burial, and resurrection has already happened. And you're just waiting for God to come back himself personally with us. Okay? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Second coming is what ends the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Then what happens? Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. The sixth dispensation as I teach. Six, number of man. There's going to be a man on a throne in Jerusalem that you're going to be able to see with your eyes the kingdom of heaven. Revelation 20, verses 1 on verse 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, the thousand year reign of the kingdom of heaven. Satan bound uh, in the bottomless pit, but sin is still present. Sin is still present. During this time, the kingdom of heaven period, the thousand year reign of Christ, that's when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. People, during the kingdom of heaven, again, these sleazy believists tell you that it's by grace through faith, no, remember, remember, remember Hebrews 11. What's faith? The evidence of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You're going to be able, maybe you'll have to use binoculars, 
but you are going to be able to actually physically see Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. The Sermon on the Mount is all works. Okay? Let's continue. And cast him in, verse 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. And on, su uh, and on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. A thousand year reign of Christ. And you can look this up on your own time. Because I want to keep this. We want to get this done with. Uh, read on your own time. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on verse 15, and Zechariah 14, verses 16 on to verse 21. During the kingdom of heaven, number one, it's all works. Okay? You can read about keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. It's going to be farming. Okay? It's not going to be any GMO nonsense. Okay? And you have to go to Jerusalem once a year at the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? And if you don't, then you're not going to get rain. Okay, like I said, read Amos 9, 11 on to verse 15, Zechariah 14, 16 on to verse 21, which describes what the period of the kingdom of heaven is like. It's going to be a farming society. It's going to be all works. Okay, it's, it's all works. You can see Jesus on the throne. Faith isn't necessary when you can see the guy. Okay? But, reading the Sermon on the Mount, you see that sin is still there. Okay? Sin has yet to be eradicated. Sin has yet to be eradicated. That is when the Sermon on the Mount is applicable during the Kingdom of Heaven. Okay? Now, once the Lord comes back, He ain't going anywhere. He ain't going anywhere. He's not going to like, oh, okay, now let me say, now I'm going to, no. Once Jesus comes back, He's here to stay. Praise the Lord. But, the kingdom of heaven is all works. Sin is still there. Sin is still there during the kingdom of heaven. People are still going to sin. Satan is bound for a thousand years. Yes, he is. But sin is still present. Still in man. What happens? Revelation 20, verses 7 to the close now. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. The kingdom of heaven technically doesn't end. But what happens is, the thousand years are up. It's time to get rid of Satan and sin. So, Satan is loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog is after the kingdom of heaven. When you hear people today trying to apply Gog and Magog for today, they're crazy. Don't pay attention to them. <coughs> okay? <coughs> Nonsense. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth <coughs> and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So, kingdom of heaven, the thousand year without Satan, ends technically how when Satan is let loose. Okay? Christ, uh, the reign doesn't end. But that thousand years expires and then Satan comes out. Okay? Alright? And then, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There's the Trinity in hell. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Death and sin are yet to be dealt with as meaning permanently removed during the kingdom of heaven. Satan is let loose. He is thrown into the lake of fire. And then, and I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. These are not encountered in this, are not we who go up before the time of Jacob's trouble, and we get our judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. That's the only time the judgment seat of Christ. After that, the inevitable judgment is right here. And it's going to be, you're going to be judged by your works. Okay? At the judgment seat of Christ, we saints, our works are judged for rewards. But, because we were once saved, always saved, eternally secure, we're going to heaven no matter what. That's the difference. Okay? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The, the, the three books. Three books. Three books. One of my personal favorite videos that the Lord ever let me do. Uh, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those, out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So at the great white throne, see, you don't make it to the uh, uh, judgment seat of Christ. You're uh, inevitably, you're going to be judged by your works. Not by grace through faith, or anything like that. Okay. During the kingdom of heaven, faith is not there. Okay? Because you can see the Lord. It's not by grace through faith. You read the Sermon on the Mount. The kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Okay? Eternity. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 14 and 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Sin is right there, gone forever. So the significance of the kingdom of heaven once Christ comes down, he ain't going anywhere. No, he's not. But that time expires by God letting loose Satan out of the pit to get rid of sin and death. And Satan had the power of sin, power of death, okay? He did, all right? Different topic. But sin was still there, is still going to be there during the kingdom of heaven. It isn't until... Satan is let loose and then he is cast into the lake of fire and then the great white throne of judgment happens and then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Sin is finally eradicated forever. Hence, a dramatic event begins the seventh and final dispensation of sin. It begins with sin, death, and hell being cast into the lake of fire. S uh, Satan, the Trinity, being cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell being cast into the lake of fire. Okay? Then begins what? Revelation 21. This is 1 on the verse 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, which we're on, were passed away and there was no more sea. Yeah, you guys are said like this is the third earth or something. You're full of blackness. Right there. This present earth is the first earth. Okay? After death and hell, <clears throat> after sin, Satan, your trinity, death and hell are obliterated. 
gone. A new heaven and a new earth. Major, major event. Night John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. And the, and the wages of sin is what? Death. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And he said unto me, It is done. New heaven and a new earth. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a, is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The seventh and final dispensation is eternity. There's no sin. So, one being made right with God in the final and seventh dispensation, eternal, eternity, it, sin is gone. There's no more sin. There's no more death. There's no more pain. And all those that, were, that are not in eternity with our Lord are forever in the lake of fire, Andy. It's all... It's Eternity, the seventh dispensation, and this dispensation are the most um, significant dispensations in history. Because once sin and death are gone, what you don't need to do works anymore. What are you working for? Sin and death are gone. And see, this differs from the Garden of Eden because it's a totally new earth and a new heaven. And it's more than just Adam and Eve. <laughs> okay? There are no more requirements in the seventh and final dispensation, which is eternity. Okay? Skip to 22, on to verse 27 in Revelation 21. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. That's one person. Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, one person. Okay? One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. I can't wait. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk, <coughs> shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book. That's the final and seventh dispensation. How does it begin? The lake of fire with sin, death, hell, the Trinity being thrown into the lake of fire. Hence, all evil, all sin, annihilated. Similar to the Garden of Eden, but totally different. You see? And let's finish this 
with Revelation 22, verses 1 on to verse 7. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Only one throne. It doesn't say thrones. Besides, the Trinity, which is Satan, is going to be in the lake of fire anyway. So, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. The tree of life doing one of these things. Okay, kind of like an arc. Arch, excuse me. Okay, and in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yield her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healings of healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse because sin, death, hell, trinity is gone. Okay? But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his faith. Again, some, some of these nitwits like eternity is by grace through faith. Ah. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light to the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever, eternity. And he said unto me, These saints are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the saints of the prophecy of this book. Verses 20 and 21. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, the final and seventh dispensation of Scripture begins with what? great white throne basically and that uh, uh, the lake of fire that death and hell are cast into it and then new heaven and a new earth no sin no death no sorrow nothing that is a rundown of what I believe and teach these seven dispensations of scripture are about this is not stuff that you Christians are being taught. You're not talking about it. And when you hear someone trying to tell you about rightly dividing the word of truth, you look at them as if they farted in your general direction. Okay? Hopefully this will help you. I know this has been a long video. Okay? Like I said, the other video where we get into greater detail than this is collectively something like four hours. Okay? So that is going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Listen, if you have questions, leave a comment. There are other people than myself who can answer the questions for you. If you have a question, I've got my emails, my two email addresses right there for you to go ahead. If you, um, if you email me, Bryce, with porn or something like that or threaten me and stuff like that, I will expose you publicly and show your email on YouTube. Okay? So watch out for that. But that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching if you do. I love you. i got some stuff to do. Let me get this uploaded. I hope this helps you. I really do. Because if you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, and we have just went over this, not as detailed as it could have been, no, but um, you ought to have now at least an understanding of this simple thing which you're not being taught, Christian. See you in the next video.